Hi everyone, today I will briefly speak about the role of the nurse leader in healthcare quality as it pertains to missing pathology results, how I am measuring the problem, any financial impact, and the steps I have taken to remediate the missing pathology results. But first, let me quickly define what healthcare quality means. According to the World Health Organization, healthcare quality is the extent to which healthcare services provided to individuals and patient populations improve desired health outcomes. In order to achieve this, healthcare must be safe, effective, timely, efficient, equitable, and people centered. As nurse leaders, we can proactively monitor our environment to provide these desired health outcomes. I want to emphasize that as nurse leaders, we play a key role in bridging the gap between quality and providing safe patient care while remaining cost conscious and encouraging innovation. I believe it was Edgar Allan Poe who stated, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, but expecting different results. Nurse leaders have a unique vantage point to recognize unsafe practices and processes and view them as opportunities for improvement and advancement. For nurse leaders to be effective, we must be agents of change. The example I will expand on shortly will speak truth to this quote. After I share this example, I hope you can agree with me that we need to challenge ourselves to view error from a different perspective. We need to make sure as leaders, we are taking a step back and making room for creative thinking and innovation. Rather than going down a punitive road and creating fear, which can then have a paralyzing effect on the environment. When leaders are engaged in their surroundings, they are better tuned in assessing, monitoring and identifying problems. This opens the door for increased communication and the implementation of new ideas and any possible risks associated with it. One area which I identified needing improvement at my healthcare facility was misplaced, delayed, and lost pathology results. There was a disconnect during the tracking of pathology results from the time the hard copy was transmitted from our facility to the physician's office and returned back to our facility with the physician's signature and data review. The second concern in the assessment of the problem was that there was lack of accountability of who was tracking the received pathology results and entering them into the patient's electronic health record or EHR. Unfortunately, this affected other areas. In the next slide, I will discuss a few negative outcomes that presented themselves as a result of the identified problem. Untracked pathology results lead to errors such as the document being misplaced, delayed, or lost, decreasing the overall quality of patient care and presenting a potential additional cost to the facility. The most unfortunate outcome of these consequences is the impact it has on the patient and their loved ones. The Patient Safety Network reveals that patients visiting ambulatory surgery centers have a 5% risk in delayed or missed diagnosis yearly due to unavailable test results. The Joint Commission has also taken a stand against these egregious errors as addressed in their second national patient safety goal. It requires healthcare organizations to report critical results of tests and diagnostic procedures to physicians in a timely manner so that they can quickly diagnose and promptly treat the patient. As noted, these errors lead to not only patient suffering, but it also has a hefty financial burden to the healthcare organization. Untracked pathology results lead to errors such as the document being misplaced, delayed, or lost, decreasing the overall quality of patient care and presenting a potential additional cost to the facility. The most unfortunate outcome of these consequences is the impact it has on the patient and their loved ones. The Patient Safety Network reveals that patients visiting ambulatory surgery centers 
have a 5% risk and delayed or misdiagnosis yearly due to unavailable test results. The Joint Commission has also taken a stand against these egregious errors as addressed in their second national patient safety goal. It requires healthcare organizations to report critical results of tests and diagnostic procedures to physicians in a timely fashion. This allows physicians to quickly diagnose and promptly treat their patient. As noted, these errors not only lead to patient suffering, but also has a financial burden to the facility, as will be discussed in the next slide. The cost of missing pathology results that is associated with misplaced or delayed results fluctuates depending on the degree of resources utilized to correct the error. According to the CEO of Referral MD, Mr. Gavette states that three out of every 10 tests are reordered because results cannot be found. He continues on to say that on average, healthcare organizations spend about $120 in labor searching for misfiled documents and $220 for the recreation of a document. So to put it into perspective, statistics from 2008 Eight, indicate that healthcare organizations spend approximately $13,000 per medical incident. Just one year later, in 2009, the Institute of Medicine reported that the United States spends approximately $750 billion related to medical error and death. Healthcare spending in the United States is among the highest in all industrialized countries. For example, while the United States spends $9,237 per person on healthcare costs, the United Kingdom, which is comparable is a comparable country, only spends about 3,749. And despite the US exorbitant costs, the outcomes continue to be poor. So in today's healthcare environment, leaders must take a proactive role in detecting errors that have a significant impact not only on quality, but also healthcare cost. When nurse leaders are proactive in identifying a problem, usually to follow, they will put together a plan on how to correct or better yet improve the problem so it doesn't happen again. For me, reviewing our pathology tracking process was my first course of action, which then followed by the review of the facility's policies and procedures. This alerted me to some needed revision in our policies and procedures, which then required me to examine the literature and look for evidence-based practice. During my search, I came across the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality website. There, it displayed their evidence-based test tracking process. This then led me to develop our facility's pathology result tracking log sheet to measure future progress. Creating a pathology result log sheet provided the staff with a step-by-step -step guide to track pathology results. I held several staff in services and training sessions on our revised policies and procedures and presented the tracking log sheet to the staff for their review. Once the staff was educated, the new processes were implemented. The log sheets would then be collected and results review quarterly during our chart review quality assessment performance improvement committee meeting. The goal was to achieve 98% compliance and sustain it for two consecutive quarters. When the problem was identified, five out of 10 charts reviewed were missing pathology results. However, after the initiation of our new intervention, 10 out of 10 charts reviewed were 100% compliant, exceeding our original expectations. Strategically thinking about assembling the plan of correction helped me build a knowledge base foundation to efficiently and intelligently improve our processes without having to sacrifice that patient quality we are all striving for. It also empowered the staff in being part of the decision-making process and having a stake in the quality they provide their patients. It equipped them to persevere through this new transition. Hebrews 12.1 encourages us to run with perseverance 
the race marked out for us. But achieving these results required time, effort, open communication, as well as staff engagement, all of which are necessary elements for innovation. The environment was set for the staff to present new ideas and suggestions, which is meaningful because the staff owned the changes and that's important in accepting new behavior. Creating a non-punitive environment and raising awareness of the problem prompted one of the front office staff to call our EHR representative and ask if our software had the capability of tracking pathology results. The representative was able to guide us to the built-in ribbon already installed in our software and walked us through the process of entering the information. This step was vital in tracking future progress and printing out audit reports. The combination of the EHR's tool along with our pathology tracking log sheet enabled us to have higher accountability but also decrease the amount of missing pathology results. The problem which I have shared with you today is a prime example of how nurse leaders can use innovation to improve the quality of care we provide our patients. It is also an example of how viewing error as an opportunity can augment processes and soften the landing on finances, creating an adaptive environment which can effectively manage any unexpected events. Referring back to the quote from Edgar Allan Poe, for healthcare to defy his definition of insanity and see improvement in quality, as leaders, we must be willing to change our own practices, our own processes and partnerships to sustain not only the future of our own organization, but that of uh, healthcare in general. As we can see, innovation creates a platform to achieve great potential. In this particular example that I've shared with you today, new ideas, research, and evidence-based practice unleash multiple positive outcomes, such as the ones listed on the screen. Higher quality care, improved pathology result tracking, prompt diagnosis and rapid patient treatment, higher patient and physician satisfaction, improved communication among staff, increased staff job satisfaction, and lower cost. Nurse leaders truly have a unique opportunity, as mentioned earlier, to think outside of the box and push the boundaries to affect change, reduce costs, and increase quality. As today's nurse leaders, we must feel comfortable with uncertainty and the changes it brings along with it. We must learn how to navigate in the complexities of our healthcare system, accepting risks, errors, vulnerability, and innovation as the new norm. Taking a step back and accepting error as an opportunity for improvement really drives our healthcare system forward and propels us to new frontiers. So I hope today you can join me in the pursuit of excellence in filling the role of nurse leader. Thank you so much for your attention during my presentation. I hope you've enjoyed it.